And we march on. And we move. So, first and foremost, we have some business to attend to. So, Cade Gordon's out on loan. Jake Kane goes to TFC. Confirmation that Darwin's back. We have our final scouting reports. First from Australia. Do we have anybody good? Harley Stevens, Will Weeks, Harrison Giles. Well, why not sign another Giles, right? So Australia was okay. We go back to India. Uprenda? Upendra. Upendra Muhammad. We'll sign you for the moment. Upendra. Uh, Sri Patel Bharat Roy, I'm guessing. Uh, Akhlesh Muhammad. Uh, Balaram Hussein. And there is a Kamal Gupta. We'll sign the Gupta for the moment. And it brings us to our final report from the Netherlands. Cedric Jansen, Matthias Peters, Ted Van Dyke. Steen, Steen, Stein, Stig, Simon. Go ahead and sign him. It's also Nick. Another Simon. The Simons. And that's going to be it for the Netherlands. So, what we need to do really quickly is decide where we are scouting next. And that will be up to you, chat. The raffle is up for that. Well, we go take a look at our already established youth academy and look to clear this out of anyone who we're not going to keep, which would include Harry Stevens out of Australia. The rest can stay for the moment. Again, Heath, we inherited him. Aside from that, uh, Peter Backer, Baker, I don't know. Let's go with Baker. Um, but Peter right now is looking like the most likely to get signed, although his work rates kind of suck. Again, I'm allowed to sign one guy a year. We might just sign Heath because, like I said, he was handed to us. And I don't want him to disappear into the void. So. Oh, uh, do players reach their full potential from training, playing games more when they're young? Uh, playing games, I think, will always benefit players the most. All right. Let's see where we are going next. Doug Dimmadom, owner of the damn, damn, dim, damn, Dimmadam. Where are we going, Dimmadam? Dimmadim's dome. Doug Dimmadam. Dimmadimmadimmadom. Damn, damn, Dimmadam, Dimmadom, Dimmadam. Germany. We go to Germany for three months. JD, you already won tonight, didn't you, JD? Yeah, you won earlier. B major. Where are we going? JD, if I'm wrong and you didn't win the one beforehand, let me know. I'll, I'll trust the honor system there. You picked Australia, I thought so. B major, where are we going? Where are we going? Pretty much name any country you want that's not in like Central America. Finland! Land of the Finns. Let's do it. And... Monkey Dude 22. Where are we going, Monkus? The hell did I win? Pick a country. Pick a country. What the hell did I win? I just said hi. Shut up. Pick a country. Or you don't play pro clubs later. Australia. We just went to Australia. Pick a different one. <laughs> Shawarma wins. What are you thinking, Monk? Mexico. I'll allow Mexico again. I mean, we did... We did scout Mexico at the beginning of this season. Monk, I'll give you one more chance. Third time's the charm. Let's avoid Mexico. Avoid Australia, the Netherlands. Or you can pass. It may be muted. We'll win the raffle this time. Who's to say? Pick any country except these three. 
Exactly. <laughs> Let's go Africa. Ah, yes, the country of Africa. <laughs> you know, the fine country of Africa. What country in Africa would you like? The, the sub-country. <laughs> what are you looking for, Monk? What are you looking for? He put an up arrow on South Africa. We're going to South Africa. There it is. Congratulations. Winners are you. We go to South Africa, Finland, and Germany. Germany. So, now that uh, we, we've done some things, we've done some stuff, let's uh, take a look at our scouting reports again really quickly. Let's go back over to scout instructions. So we have you and Tacky. Fucking bring Deli Alley back. Uh, Unavar, I'm guessing? He plays for Travis on Spore. That's fun. I mean, there's literally one dude in Unava. Let's, uh, and he's on loan from Ayak, so we can't even bring him in. Deli Ali, fabulous. He don't show me Sadio Mane. Now I'm sad. Now I'm sad. In fairness, I didn't fully see everything that uh, Germany had to offer. Kunku's just not going to happen. Makoko. We already have him in the Stormy, what's up? I am having a great time with FIFA, as I typically do. How are you tonight? Oh, Emery Chan. He's only 28. It has been like 17 years since he was on Liverpool. We need Haaland. That's not going to happen. I'm not taking him away from Man City. All right, nobody else I really want to add to the list. And then America, uh, Marika, we haven't been there long. This would also include our Netherlands options. Ernest! Shout out to Ernest. Okay, so we really don't have too much to look at. So let's go back over to Yield Transfer Hub. And actually, before we do that, let's uh, double check ye old squad hub. Just to kind of see what we're looking at here. So goalkeeping wise, Allison Kelleher for the rest of the year. Adrian's leaving at the end of the season. So a third choice keeper is certainly in effect. At left back, we got Robertson. We got Samikas. I mean, Norris is there as a project. Adam Lewis, Owen Beck. I mean, we could look for a third choice left back, but center back wise, we got Kanate, we got Van Dyke, Matip, Phillips, Gomez. We don't need another center back, and we got a bunch of younger guys there, too. Right back, I need a second choice right back who's better right now than Calvin Ramsey. And I need a second choice CDM. Behind Fabinho. And then in the midfield. It is Henderson and Tiago, Keita and Ox. And I mean, I have some project midfielders in a sense. That I could look for. Uh, we don't typically run a formation with a cam. But if we did, Curtis Jones is fine there. Could look for a project cam. Left wing, obviously, Harvey behind Diaz, Carvalho behind Salah. And then striker-wise, we have more depth than we know what the hell to do with. All right, so with that knowledge, let's go back over to Yield Transfer Hub. So uh, we, we memed about Harvey Giles because this kid stopped two penalties in the same game for Harrogate as we played them. Let's uh, let's see if we can bring in Harvey Giles. He doesn't want to come to Liverpool. What? Wow. He doesn't want to move. 
Okay. Well then. We do need a second choice right back. Malo Gusto is uh, our best option. 13.3, 16.6. Okay, so we can. He's a Premier League goalkeeper. It makes sense. That's fair. <laughs> Let's see if we can bring in the Gusto as our second choice right back to really shore up the team. So Malo Gusto. Uh, first and foremost, I don't know if I have anybody I'd even want to offer on a player swap. I mean, outside of like Milner, which wouldn't make a ton of sense. Goalkeeper wise, I mean, Adrian just became a lot more important because I can't take Giles away now. Yeah, there's really nobody that I want to move out. All right, so let's just offer the fee of uh, 13.5 mil and see what's up there. Perfect. Well, I didn't expect that to happen, but all right, 13 mil for a second choice right back. I'm good with that. Gotcha. What's up? So we're still going to have to agree with terms with the player, but I mean, this guy looks pretty damn sick. He does look pretty damn good. He's fast. I don't view Leon as like a super top team in which to take away a top player. And I mean, again, he'll be second choice behind Trent. But he fits the bill. Malagusto. Let's uh, see what we can do here to bring you to Liverpool as our first transfer in the window. What do we got? The Gusto. All right, so sporadic, which is perfect. I accept that. Once a three-year deal, can I counter with a four? Yes, I can. No release clause, and he already named his price. 8.7 uh, or 8,700 a week. $78,000 signing bonus for every five appearances. $41,000. Okay, that's not going to cut it. We're going to remove that bonus. That was pretty sneaky. That was pretty sneaky. Instead, I will give you a $100,000 signing bonus. Because, I mean, we have a $132 million budget right now. What do you think? All right. We have our second choice right back. Say it with gusto. It's gusto. Beautiful. All right. It's only for five appearances, not every five. It's fine. Say it with gusto. The gusto is here. Handshakes with Jurgen, who's busy on his phone. This man going through his fitness test. Look at that cutoff sweater. Do the lean. It's not official until he leans. Lean on Jurgen, and that'll do. Malo Gusto, welcome aboard for 13.5 million from Olympic Lyon. And apparently, uh, the game didn't view this as the best buy. Replace three players from the team. Well, we're not going to accomplish that goal. But I mean, his value and the asking price. I mean, stronger negotiation skills could have saved you three million on this. How? This is, really, you're saying I could have stayed, I could have gotten him for 10. Really? Interesting. Well, it's fine. I mean, yeah, he's not good enough to be the starter to replace Trent, but that wasn't my intention. But there we go. We have brought in the Gusto. Now, uh,. I don't really know. I don't think we're going to be able to bring in Harvey Giles, at least yet. Obviously, he doesn't want to leave. <laughs> Which is pretty damn funny. Uh, is there a third choice project left back? There is not. And again, in terms of center back, based off of our current business, there's uh, pretty much nothing we have to do there. We can leave these guys on the short list for now. 
So left back and goalkeeper, we're not really going to be able to accomplish those goals for now. Uh, a second choice CDM. It could be another signing from Leon. Johan Lepinant. Who um, doesn't have the best work rates in the world. But as a second choice CDM, rather than Milner playing, or Lepinant would actually do pretty well. Does he want to come here? I have a chance of a deal around 5.1 million. All right, cool. They're willing to negotiate, too. Let's keep bringing in the French. It's all about the French. I'm turning Leon into a feeder club. Let's see what we got. So, um... God, I think I'm just going to offer, like, four flat, right? I guess. That's right back in my office. What if I offer like three million just to start? Interesting. They're willing to do a flip for Phillips and 1.8 million. That I am not willing to do. Remove the exchange. Propose new fee. Back to three million. But if I sell him, you'll get 5% on a sell-on clause. Jesus. <laughs> 3.85 and a 17% sell-on clause. The tension's high. I pretty much have to take that. Or risk losing the deal. He said still a million dollars under market value. I am going to take that. That's not that bad. That's not that bad. Lepanon. See if we can work out the deal to have you sign here and, and use Leon to uh, fill up a lot of gaps in this team. Uh, so you would be under prospect. He's okay with being deemed a prospect. Good. Solid hair as well. Five-year deal. All right. It'll be a three-year deal. Be our counter. No release clause. 8.8 .8 a week with a $76,000 signing bonus. That is a done deal. I could cheap out a little bit more, but what's the point in cheaping out? Like, let's just get our guy. We have the money. Let's do it. Here comes Le Panon. Show him on that exercise bike, baby. Work it. Look at the hair. He's like a French hook. Look at the flow. Working hard or hardly working? I like how the EFL badge disappeared, but there he is. The second signing in our tenure. We essentially pull off a double from Lyon, which uh, honestly was pretty damn good. Price rating F. Hey, price rating, we got an A. An excellent deal for Johan Lepanon. He is not good enough to replace three players from the team as we were dealed for, but uh, yeah, 3.8 million. The asking price was 6.4. We did well. I'll take that. Again, one of our goals was to replace players from the team. I'm not even worried about that. All right. Uh, we still had wonders about a project center mid. Which would be Sydney Raybigger. There's also Elliot Matazo. <clears throat> Project player. <laughs> we'll talk about that in a minute. We'll talk about that in a minute. Uh, for the moment, uh, Sydney from Germany with fifth. Um, not the best player in the world, but to be honest, he would fill a, a need that we have right now. 1.7 to 1.4. Let's see if uh, he's what we need before uh, we try to see if a big deal can go through. Let's see. So, Sydney. I'm going to go for like 900k and see if he just gets pissed. 
Interesting. James Norris. Seven hundred forty K. I'm going to counter that. Let's propose a new fee of 1.1 plus the 5% sell on clause. Done deal. All right, sweet. So, still 1.1, 5% sell on clause isn't that bad. That's not going to kill us, but it'll help them out again down the road. All right, Sydney, can we work out this deal? Can we work out this deal, sir? Look at look at this young man. Dressed to the nines. He knows how important this meeting is. Alright, so you would obviously be a prospect. Look at these pastries. Nuge, what's happening? You about ready for some pro clubs in a little bit? Uh five year deal for Sydney Rybegger. It'll be a four-year deal instead. 4K pastries. No release clause. Want $600 a week and a $5,000 signing bonus. Done deal. We do bring in our Project Center mid. Sydney. Beautiful. So right now, we're pretty much filling up the, the holes in this team in terms of the depth. Sydney, welcome to Liverpool. Now get on the bicycle. It's kind of shitty. It's the same thing every time. <laughs> At least for prospects. If it's a huge signing, maybe it looks different. Because Jurgen barely gives him the time of day. <laughs> maybe if it's a big signing, it's something different. Work it, baby. Work it. Work that bike. That's right. Sydney. Welcome aboard. We are using the Youth Academy as well, but not a ton. So that is our third transfer of the day. Kind of filling gaps with some younger players. Price rating. Another A. That's right. That's right, son. Master negotiator. 1.1 million. Player value was 1.5. They wanted 1.7. Fantastic. Oh, my God. Uh, so the only other thing I was really looking forward to was a Project Cam. In which there is no such thing that we have currently scouted. Which means we can now kind of look at some other things. Um, Ivan Tony, I had as a free kick specialist, we can drop him. Um, Rodrigo Ribeiro is young enough, we can keep him on the list. Let's get rid of Ramos. Let's get rid of Evan Ilson. Um, Tell will be fine with. Ender and Joy work. Uh, honestly, for the moment, I am cool with pretty much removing everybody from our shortlist. Now, we do still have money to spend. Quite a bit, in fact. If I am not mistaken. Yeah, we still got $127 million to try to pull off a move here. So, this is obviously now where we start to debate a big, big move. A big, big move indeed. And that would be Jude Bellingham. That is the biggest move we could make. Florian Betts is not that bad. Bringing in like a James Madison... But yeah, so I think what I want to do is we'll leave Giles on the short list. Everybody else we will remove for now and rediscover them later on once we uh, once we get to that point. But for now, we can pretty much clear out our our list, knowing that our business is done with the exception of uh, a couple of glitched out players. So we have Giles. The big, big move. We need to be a high... Yeah, it's true. We need to be a bigger club. Now, the reason... 
actually, before we even do that, a reason to bring in Jude. You know, as we get a look at the team here. We bring in Jude. That allows us to have a center mid-depth of Tiago and Henderson, Nabby, and Ox. And really, Ox will be the one who falls back. So really, the first team next year would be Tiago and Jude. Second team would be Hendo and Nabby. And then Ox is the fifth choice center mid. But that gives us fucking phenomenal depth in the midfield. Absolutely phenomenal. That would be the reason to do it. And honestly, I mean, there's there's a race to come up with the signing an eighty three point five million dollar evaluation. Again, we can't sign Giles, but we could bring in Jude. Whew. So the asking price is one hundred and fifteen point seven mil. 92.6 mil might apparently go through. Can we secure the gigantic signing of bringing in Jude Bellingham, the Bellingham from Dortmund? Which uh, apparently I'm negotiating with fucking 1980s Bon Jovi. Look for a better third team keeper. Well, I have my third team keeper in mind, but uh, he doesn't want to come here because we're not a big enough team. Um, in terms of a player swap, again, there's nothing that I really want to do or nobody that I really want to part with. This could be the right time to move on from Firmino to work out a deal like this. I would have to spend the rest of the month trying to find a young third choice striker. But this could be the time. I also need to factor in that Curtis Jones is a factor in this situation. So, I mean, Fabinho at CDM alongside Le Panel. You got Tiago and Jude, Nabby and Hendo. Really leaves no room for Curtis Jones. Not to mention getting rid of Ox. This could also be the right time to move on from Nabby, who's 27. Because I want Hendo to shore things up for the second team as a, as a veteran leader. But we need to make sure that there's room for Curtis Jones. So now would be the right time, I think. We just re-signed Nabby, but now would be the right time to flip him over to Dortmund. He gets a fresh start there. We get that $33 million and then we try to scout out a striker for the rest of the month to uh, move on from Firmino if we can. That's a bit of a tough call, though. At the same time, I think we should prioritize Firmino because his value is never going to be higher and Keita still has some value. So I absolutely love Bobby, but I mean, the rumors of him leaving are already there in real life at this point. I'm at least going to see if they're interested. I'm at least going to see if they're interested. I just don't know if he is the uh, if he is the one to make it happen. Let's do that. Fifty-five million dollar fee. And a future 5% sell-on. You can only offer one player at a time. I mean, if we're offering a swap, it's either Firmino or it's it's Nabby. There's, there's no other choice. It's one of the two. I love Bobby Firmino so much, but Liverpool do need to move on, and we have to play Darwin and Jota. We have to. You know, especially now with Harvey and... Uh, Fabio on the wings, like, Jota can't play the wing, he's got to play striker, so 
We have to make those hard decisions. What is their initial response? Okay, that's not what we were looking to see, and unfortunately the tension's up there. They don't have interest in Firmino. And they are looking for a hell of a lot more money than I was hoping that they'd look for. Let's try to gauge their interests in Nabi Keita. This is uh this is gonna be a little bit tough though. I'm afraid he's gonna get pissed and walk out of the room and we won't be able to renegotiate this for another week. But Nabby 55 million 10% sell on clause. Okay. It's Nabby 72 million and a 10% sell on clause for Jude Bellingham. So it was mentioning in terms of value that, like, oh, you might be able to get like 92.6 million to work. I mean, obviously, in terms of outright market value, that'd be 107. That'd be 107. Their asking price, though, was apparently 115 million. So from 115 million down to 107.2, that's not bad. We would get them under value. The 10% sell-on's rough, but I don't plan on getting rid of him for, uh, for a decade. I think we have to take that. I mean, he is Nabby's direct replacement. I don't think I can risk another renegotiation, though, because of the tension. I'm going to accept that. And the question is, as we get ready to talk to Jude... Is this 100% the decision I want to make? I have a really rough time getting rid of veteran players. But as it is, Nabby's been on the bench. It'll be Thiago and Jude, Henderson and Jones on the second team with Ox as the depth because, again, Archer's on loan, Milner's retiring. I think that's the best decision. Getting rid of Nabby opens up things for Curtis Jones, who I think I called Daniel Jones again. Because I'm terrible. Let's see if we can lock this deal down. Can we get the big signing that might be uh, a little bit, a little bit telegraphed in terms of, of course, that's the big move you make with the Liverpool franchise or Liverpool career mode, but. He wants to be under an important role. That's fine, because to be honest, he should be in a crucial, and I could offer him a crucial, but we'll take important. Five-year deal, perfect. No release clause, but how much is he getting paid? He's going from 8 k a week. Let's go up to like 25 with a $100,000 signing bonus. And see what he thinks. It was a little bit predictable. But it is a done deal. Liverpool bringing in Jude Bellingham from Dortmund. Trying to will this into reality. Please. But we do what we have to do. Even Jude's going to get the same goddamn treatment. Jürgen's going to show up for half a second. Hey, how you doing? And that's it. But that uh, certainly puts us on our path. Like, that's a big, big money signing. You know, we re-signed Nabi Keita to be able to use him to get the deal done. We spent a lot of fucking money. But we still have a good amount left, and we'll still be selling off pieces here and there. Especially based off of what we do in the Youth Academy. But Nabi plus 74.2 million... It gives us a C rating for that. I'm not surprised. It's a good price. Not an amazing price. Stronger negotiating could have saved you 20 million. I don't believe you. I don't believe you. But we do what we had to do to get the deal done. We'll keep our eye, of course, out on Harvey Giles long term. 
But let's set up what will be the new first team is again four new additions here. Rybiger, Gusto, Lepanon, and Bellingham. 20 million. Did you not see the tension? Exactly. There's no way we would have been able to risk it. Not a chance. All right. This is a beautiful, beautiful sight. So Jude is in for Henderson. Right out of the gates. I'm good with them being my midfield subs, to be honest. Like, someone like Henderson does make a lot of sense. Gomez over Matip, just because he's younger. I mean, granted, he is 25 at this point, but... And then Samikas can still be on the bench as opposed to the Gusto. Maybe pure cash at the player slot. Yeah. I mean, I would have had to put Nabby up for sale anyway. So that is the only change to the first team is that Jude is in. And again, the good thing is, like, he can defend. Like, he's not the... He's not exactly a pushover. He's got 80 stand tackle in that regard. Like, he is perfect for our midfield situation. He, Tiago, Fabinho in that midfield. Like, that's just gross, man. Of course, Darwin. How close are we? Like, two minutes. <laughs> Like two minutes. Our second team from this point on, then, after that change. Uh, obviously, for the moment, Firmino will be a starter. I still think we should do like a last second look at whether or not I can find a project striker to ultimately replace. That is kind of the game plan. We can get Hendo in there. We can get Jones in there. Le Panel as our CDM. Which means off the bench for the rest of uh, this season. Ox, Arthur, and Milner. Although, to be honest, I might just move on from, from Arthur at this stage. Either that or we move on from Milner. But I want Rybegger to be on the bench. We might even try to immediately loan him out. So this might still change a little bit. But for the most part, the, uh, the vision has, you know, the visions come together here. Ah, uh, tip. And then instead of Ramsey, we have the Gusto. We got Phillips. We got Ramsey. It's not that bad. That second team, too, is looking pretty damn good. I'm, I'm happy with that. I'm very, very happy with that. I think the last thing that we'll do, just to make sure that we don't forget, is to uh, go over to our scouting instructions. And now we know that we can directly look, specifically, for promising young strikers that we could uh, bring into the team here. We'll also have center forward. And we'll, uh, we'll be good to go in that regard as Twitch is damn well determined to take down this stream. Honestly, goalkeeper-wise, too, we could look for another young goalkeeper for now. I still think I would prefer... I still think I would prefer it to be Giles for the memes. However, I don't know if that's going to happen. So we got England, Spain, Italy, France. Let's go back over to Germany. And uh, double check about young German goalkeepers there. And we'll stay in the U.S. as well. So that was just day one of the, uh, the transfer window being open. That is a good bit of business. I'm feeling pretty damn optimistic about this team. And I mean, especially too, we are currently in first in League Two. At this stage, 
We're 14 points up on Manchester United in terms of being on the outside looking in for at least having a shot at moving up to League 2 halfway through the season. Or League 1, that is. So I, uh, I think we're looking good.